In this video, we'll learn how you can import key material into AWS and use it to create your own customer master key. So the key material is the actual part of your CMK that's used to encrypt and decrypt data. And by default, when you create a customer master key, KMS generates the key material itself. However, you do have the option of bringing your own key material and using your own solution to generate that key material. So if you want to bring your own key, this is only supported with symmetric customer master keys. And there's no automatic rotation, but you can manually rotate keys with new key material. And I do just want to pause at the moment and make a quick note. Any of the bulleted items in this lesson are definitely fair game for the exam. At the end of this KMS section, you'll notice there's a quiz. I recommend going through that quiz. And if there's any questions you have a hard time answering, reviewing the videos because KMS is very heavily represented on the certification test. So let's take a moment to talk about some of the use cases for importing your own key material. Perhaps you need to prove that your key was generated from a source of entropy that meets your requirements. So you may have certain requirements for the way that the key is generated. And when you see that term source of entropy, what that essentially means is a source of randomness. So that source of randomness is going to be something in our own infrastructure, like for example, a hardware security module and certain regulatory requirements demand that we use a hardware security module that is single tenancy to generate our encryption keys. So we can use one that's on premises or we can use cloud HSM. But in this case, we're talking about something in our own infrastructure. So cloud HSM is out. So maybe we have our own hardware security module that we're using to generate key material. And what if we need the ability to delete and restore keys in KMS without the waiting period? So normally, if I want to delete a key in KMS, I have to schedule it for deletion. And there's going to be a waiting period of 7 to 30 days. That's the case if I'm allowing KMS to generate the key material for me. However, if I am generating the key material myself, I will have the ability to delete that key material at any time without a waiting period. And then I can always restore that key material from my on-premises environment. So this allows me to keep a copy of my key material outside of KMS for durability. And even if there's some major failure within the AWS region that impacts my key, I can always create a new customer master key with the same key material and decrypt that data. So let's walk through the step-by-step -step process here. And I want to really explain the why behind each of the steps. And also you'll notice on your screen here that I've included a link to the AWS documentation, but basically there's a four step process and the documentation walks you through using OpenSSL to complete this four step process. But most of you won't be using that in an actual production environment. So it's important to have an understanding of the steps and why those steps are performed for the exam. So let's take a look. Step one is to create a customer master key. And the customer master key that you're going to create in this case is going to have no key material. So I kind of represented it as a gray customer master key. It has to be symmetric. You cannot create an asymmetric key with no key material in it. And when you're creating a customer master key, there's a few different options of key material origin. Now, in the examples we've seen up till now, we've used KMS to create that key material. I can choose a cloud HSM. And so if I'm using the cloud HSM service of AWS, 
I'm going to have a dedicated HSM just for me, single tenancy. Or I can choose external as my key material origin. And that means that I am going to have to import the key material myself. I'm going to have to generate and import the key material myself. And then the next step of the process is pretty similar to what we saw when we were using KMS to generate the key material. I'll configure an alias, tags, I'll configure my key administrator, and I'll configure my key users. And again, these are just IAM users, exactly the same as we did it with KMS generated keys. And then we'll hit next and we'll move on. Now the next step is to obtain the public key and import token. We have to download those. So again, let's assume that we're creating our key material in an on-premises key management server. I don't want to upload that key material without encrypting it first. So what I need to do is download this zip file from AWS and the zip file includes these two little components shown here in blue. It contains a public key. And the public key is going to be used to encrypt my key material. So that when I actually upload this key material to KMS, it's not flowing over the internet in unencrypted format. And so when KMS actually receives my key material, it has a private key that corresponds with that public key and it can use their private key to decrypt the data and import that key material. And then there's also something called an import token. The import token is essentially just metadata to make sure that the key material is imported correctly. So I'll need that as well. And then I'll pick the wrapping algorithm so the wrapping algorithm is basically what's the algorithm, the encryption algorithm that I want to use to protect my key material. And there's three options that are available there. SHA-256 is the preferred option. Uh, SHA-1 needs to be used if you're using OpenSSL. So if you're trying this at home and you're using OpenSSL, SHA-1 is the encryption algorithm, but the recommended encryption is SHA-256. And so, yeah, I'll just download the wrapping key, the import token, and I'll have to choose my wrapping algorithm when I do that, but then I'll just get a zip file and I'll have to extract that zip file. Now, if you do decide to follow along with the documentation and do the proof of concept, the purpose of OpenSSL is to actually encrypt the key material. And that's what we're going to see here in step three. So in the proof of concept, it has you download the public key and the token. And now you have these two items, the public key and the token that you're going to use to actually encrypt your key material. And so, how are you going to actually do this in a production environment? Well, that depends on which KMS solution you're actually using. OpenSSL can be used to kind of test this out or try it out, but it's not recommended for production environments. A commercial HSM or KMS is recommended to actually encrypt the key material. So once we've got the key material encrypted, now it's time to actually import that key material into KMS. And that's step four of our process here. So now that our key material is successfully encrypted, it's time to import it into KMS. So what we're going to start with is actually importing the encrypted key itself. So here you can see the encrypted key has been migrated into AWS KMS. And we also have to import our token as well. And then at that point, KMS is going to be able to decrypt that key that we encrypted using their public key. And now the key material is available in KMS and the import token can be used to validate that the key material has been imported correctly 
And the final step in the process is we'll establish an expiration for that new key material. And so now from this moment forward, we own the key material that's in KMS. And we've set an expiration date, but if we want to, we can manually rotate that key material and we can delete that key material on demand without any sort of waiting period.